unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language. But the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to preach something short, but a bit crazy. And then we will worship the Lord. God is about to do something. Tell your neighbor God is about to do something. They will see when they believe. But some will also believe when they see. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the good Lord Jesus. Amen. This story is going to be written this evening. In the name of Jesus Christ. Something is going to happen to you and me. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Genesis chapter 22. The Bible says from the first verse. It came to pass after this thing. That God did tempt Abraham and said unto Abraham. And he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering unto one of the mountains, which I shall tell thee. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, saddled his ass, and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and cleft the wood for the burnt offering. And rose up and went to the place which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and and Abraham took the wood of burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and the knife and they went both them together. Isaac spake unto Abraham his son and said, My father, and he said, Here am I my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both. Together. Hallelujah. In my understanding, of how men define worship in our dispensation. I have come to the uttermost notice. I've gotten to the observation of things. That there are two kinds of planes where we men live. The Bible says that he has appointed every man their own timing. And their boundaries of habitation. If happily, they will seek after him. And fill up to him. And find him. The Bible says, though he be not far. God is not far. God's power is not far. God's anointing is not far. God's glory is not far. The answers of the Spirit are not far. But certain men don't understand the pattern. The pattern is, they seek the Lord, Banonia, Katonda, if happily they will feel after him and find him. 
There is a place I've experienced the finding of things. Spiritual. But of the very indifference of not feeling after the very things we find. So when the Christ speaks about men casting pearls and swine. Some people think that the men which they call swine in the story are necessarily men which are alienated from the life of God. Some people think but I've come to the realization that even in the dispensation of the New Testament, in the place when we define the life which is after Christ, I've realized that it men seek to find a God which they feel not after. They become indifferent to the ultimate pattern. And their ways move with the forms and formulas. But without the distinctions of the very spirit that does the thing. I don't know whether you understand what I'm trying to say. It is one thing for you to sit in a service. It's another when you carry the spirit of the service. It is one thing for you to sit under a man of God. It's another when you carry the spirit of that man. It is one thing to say, I will have a worship evening. It's another when you don't carry the spirit of the worship. Because in this life have I seen men which are in the understanding of things with the understanding of things but indifferent to the feeling of and because they are indifferent to the feeling of the ultimate move of the spirit cannot be established and to its own extent approved because they do not about in the love that ought to feel after that exercises all kinds of knowledge and judgment like the book of Thessalonians says that we may examine the things that are most excellent the place where he's not telling us to to check whether they are excellent. He calls us to give the things the power to be excellent. That God that comes to water comes to simple wine. And out of the very proclamation, the apprehensions of the wisdom of God, he gives the wine and says, This is my blood. In the covenant by all knowledge and judgment he ultimately approves the wine as most excellent blood but when men partake of that blood they don't take it as though it is wine they take it as blood because it tastes like blood not because it carries the ingredients of the blood but the wine with all depth of knowledge and trust me I mean the things of yeah, the yeah, he he and defines them with God to be excellent. Now, Kati. the man which is indifferent to this light thinks that the Christ is lying. Do you understand what I'm saying? He will think that the Christ is lying because he's going to ask himself how has it become blood? It is not the chemical process that this thing undergoes to become blood. No, it's ultimately the life that judges by truth. The Bible says in whom there is no life that when he says that take this, the scriptures don't say that it has the blood. I don't know that you understand it. The scriptures don't say that they have not tested blood of their but when it entered their spirit they the ultimacy of things define this as blood and it established men in another covenant with the very blood that sticketh better food than the blood of and he says do this always 
Kino mchikole hulijo. In remembrance of me. Ngabu mzijukirazi. Now some people think Abazo mambalo hoza. He's saying take blood and agamba. Munye o musayi no mubi. No. Neta. Most distinctively. Okusingi la dala. Turn water into wine. Mutu usama se muka fulo mwe. Turn wine into blood. Mutu usama se muka fulo musayi. Turn wine into body. Mutu usama se muka fulo musayi. But what body and blood. Wine and bread. No mubi. Wine and bread. Wine and bread. Bio nebio. That is why the moment Abraham finds the Melchizedek order, the first dispensation of offering was bread and wine. Take a bit. You got me? When he meets Melchizedek, the scriptures tell us, and Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought bread and wine. He knew that that was the very order by which we judge the things of the Spirit. Now, many people think that it was necessarily physical bread and physical bread. They don't get it. He says, let me carry the same thing in the New Testament dispensation. And the scriptures speak of the Christ as that which comes in the Melchizedek. Same plot. Kakati, kakodo ke kamuao. Bread, mugati, wine. Nempinyo. And he says, take this wine. Nataba munywe empinyo. This is my blood. Kuno musai guange. In the covenant. Munda gano. Take you this. Nataba mutuari nechine. Which is what? Kuno mugati. Bread. Mubiri guange. This is my body. Kuno mubiri guange. In the covenant. Munda gano. For as long as you partake of my blood. Agambi nga munywa kumusai. My body. Kumusai guange. No mubiri guange. You will be blessed. And he says, this, in remembrance of me, as the man outside the veil begins at the wine and the bread, the man outside the veil begins at the blood and the veil, the man inside the veil, he understands what turned the wine into blood. And the mystery that turns bread into body. Now, even but, when he's with the lad, his distinctions of worship is not because he's going to see this boy the last time. It is because he has dealt with another priest. Who understands different? Who speaks better things? Who has no beginning of death? No end of death. And whose no heart is not father or mother? He carries the very priest. He knows and understands what happened. So he tells them which are not of the sea. Go yonder. Because it's only the man of faith and his seed that can be allowed in that dispensation to judge the most excellent. The seed might not have understanding, but the man of faith directs the seed. So, look at 11. The seed is. Huh? So he stays yonder with the lad. With his seed. And he says, go yonder. No servant could stay in that kind of glory. Because neither had God dealt with any servant. To understand this Abraham. And the nature of seed he carried. The guy he carried is a guy who was spoken into his life. Not manufactured by conjugal operation. He tells Sarah, in this time, thou shall have a son. And the Bible says, Sarah laughed. 
But when Sarah laughed, she laughed so oblivious of her age to give birth. While the approvers of the Spirit that examine things most sexual realize that that was the very point. Isaac entered. And the scriptures say, and now they called him Isaac. Meaning he laughed. Sarah Seka. Sarah laughed. Yeah, yeah. Because she thinks. God is kidding. What seems like unbelief because she laughed. Is what establishes the promises in her. Because what makes her laugh while in object. Actually, is God is laughing because Isaac has entered. That's why she's named his name Isaac. He's called Isaac. I Isaac. I Isaac. Because he laughed. Now the place of Sarah laughing might be indifferent. But it doesn't change the faithfulness of God. Because he's dealing with a particular thing. Even if this seed was indifferent to the truth, it is still aligned to the substance of his mind. But I proved the most excellent thing to the man of faith. But even if the man of faith did not believe, it did not change the faithfulness of God. So the Bible says it's our unbelief. The Bible does not change the faithfulness of God. The Bible says it does not change the faithfulness of God. For he cannot deny himself. While we wait to Mukatonda, there is something in God. Every single time you are unbelieving, you continue to believe more. There is something in God. Even if you say I won't worship, you just get deeper in worship. Even if you feel like I don't have the strength to pray, when you pray to God, that it may come to us when I am weak. Then I am strong. Then I adore that I'm strong. When I am weak, then I know I am strong. I want to imagine you. If you're getting me, put up your hand. So, now, this is deeper than Sarah's faith. It is deeper than Sarah believing for a child. This is entirely the faithfulness of God. You can't partake to in the government. Of the wine and bread, most excellent in the priestly order, and you don't get the understanding that the intention was orange for the wine to turn blood and the bread to become body. That the man in the veil ought to understand when Jesus says, Do this in remembrance, every distinction of wine ought to turn to blood. Before we plead the very blood. Every distinction of bread must become body before we claim we are the body of Christ. Them say that we err in many things. But if a man offend not in spirit, that man is a perfect man, even able to breathe a whole The only problem with our Christians is that he's talking about a human body. They don't understand that the body of Christ is a body. If our confessions are right, if the understanding of our proclamations are right, if our worship is right, we can control the whole world. Now, let me go deeper here. There is a Christian on the edge of studying the most excellent thing, and thus there are multiple indulgences seek to the perfection of those things. There is a man in the book of Psalms which show 
the end of all perfection. He says, for I have seen the end of all perfection. But sure what became a He saw something deeper than any man could ever define as perfect. When a man is in that dispensation, he has the right to judge what is excellent, not to seek for excellence. Now, when Paul prays. Paul but of all those things that were gained unto me, I have counted loss for the excellence of Christ. For whom I count all things but God, that I may win Christ. Paul is looking at a man who is coming in 2015. And that man ought not to count all things but loss for the excellence. Because that man is the perfection of the He is the distinction of excellence. He begins from a life pastor. All a foundation. The perfection of things. When we excel past we build. Because men don't live in power. depend on power. Don't live in town. When Paul looks at you, he wishes he was around. Because to Paul, Paul was given the mystery to lay the foundation. Period. To us, was the ultimate promise and prophecy that in the last day knowledge shall increase 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 why won't worshiping a man one time said People long time ago. They used to worship and they missed. And the priests couldn't offer in Bukamana. And the Lord told me. <laughs> that was just the beginning. If men could worship and the glory filled the place that the priests were unable to minister. Know ye not that the Levitical was after the human seed. Now if Melchizedek can stand to minister in that very glory, expect another thing. Have you gotten what I'm saying? Now, oh, we don't have to walk for mist. Because even they that walked in trials, they walked with them for 40 years. They were in testing. But the clouds appeared 40 years. I'm talking about something deeper than clouds and fire. Because if a man under the testations of the spirit, because the number 40 represents Christ, if a man can be under the testations of the spirit, and he receives fire, receives clouds by fire, moves under a different atmosphere, and could not smite them by day, neither the wind by night, Neither their clothes worked cold, yes. nor their shoes. Yet yes. Jesus had not yet come. Yes. How much more? How much more? How much more? Than the generation that has now understood that Jesus is not only come, but he died and rose. He was given a name of the every name. Let the sound not the same. Let the sound not the same. Let the sound of that name. Every knee should bow. And every tongue should confess. 
by the things on the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of the Father. He descended, ascended, gave gifts to men, went in glory, seated at the right hand of the Father. And this is now left made perfect. That we might have confidence from that day. So as he is, not as he was. So as he is, not as he was. So as he is, not as he was. So as he is, so are we in this world. What kind of atmosphere can the Christ have? Christ just over the planet. The Bible says as he is. So are we. What kind of atmosphere is with the Christ exalted? When he says as he is, it means there was a was. He's not talking about that who was. He's talking about that who he is now. Christ is seated. Demons should not have been an affair in this kind of worship. Witchcraft should not have been an affair in this kind of worship. Witness and disease should not have been an affair in this kind of worship. But how be it that the man of faith can move with a seed and carry servants along and the servants think they are going where he's going and then they get to a certain place where servants never go. Where servants never go. Because the place that grants success in that dispensation cannot relate with the man's servant. It can only relate with the friend who carries the seed. I don't know if you understand that to yourself. Let me tell you something. Sweet. There is a way God deals. There is a way God deals with servants. Is different from the man of faith and his seed. Not that we don't serve. He says, born servant. Paul calls it born servant. It means by nature we are mature sons. But by choice we serve. We don't serve as a nature. We serve as a choice. And there are men which serve as servants by nature, carry a false humility. And when we get to places when we really must do to God, God, sometimes it's deceptive that we serve them yonder. No, we send them yonder. Continue with us. Where God has set us close. But because they don't carry there is a place where I have to hide with the seed. You get what I'm talking about. Because it's a place where servants go. And there's a place where the men of faith are go. And the deception of men of faith with their seed stays back. And the excitement of the servant because it fills his set. Preach that as a commission. Only to realize he can only go that far. Because when the man of faith is from one, he will still find the servant at point B and leave him there. Because when the altar is filled, the servant won't understand any language. So the son says, Father, I see the wood. I see the stones, but I don't see the offering. And the man which was with the seed worshipping, that is when we realize he wasn't just worshipping. No, he was seeking the mind of the spirit. He wasn't just worshipping. He was seeking the mind of the spirit. The Bible says the things that are written are written before. For your learning, that through comfort and patience of the spirit, you might have hope. He's not worshipping. Because he needs an answer. He's worshiping because he wants to know the mind. When he carries the mind of the spirit, he finds the servant which is sent to him. Still stuck yonder. Still stuck yonder. He goes past the man yonder. And now when he's the seed, the seed asks him, Father, I see 
Ndaba the stones. I see Ndaba the firewood. But where is the lamb? And that's when we realize that in the place of worship, the ultimate mystery, which was hid from the age of Christ, and now revealed Christ in us, the hope of glory, is revealed to the man Abraham. And even though he's speaking to Isaac, he's actually speaking to you in 24 He's saying, God shall provide for himself. I said so. He said, when Jesus saw that, yes, we are here. He says, Your grandfather, Abraham, Ibrahim, rejoice with your son to see my day. And Akulu Gatwe in his worship. The point is that in his worship, there is a point where he saw the cross. And then he started to die. He started to die. He started to die. He started to die. He, somebody around him. Now I understand why you couldn't tell Sarah. I can take it the right to Sarah and tell her I'm going She's 90 years. And she has kept her kingdom. Remember, she's already somehow worried about you. Because when the Lord raised you, you were worshipping God. And God told you, get out. Go where you are. You don't know where you are. And you make the lady walk out of that room. She doesn't understand. Behold, I will get the kid. And you know that the Lord has told me to sacrifice my kid. Overcome. There, over our limb. Why didn't he tell Sire? He loved her. But she was indifferent. She was indifferent. So when the man says God shall provide for himself a life, Abraham is now telling us that what you see me as take a son to ultimately sacrifice is actually the true story of what will carry a figure. That kind of message can only be understood with a spirit of a man which receives by figure. That is why when he speaks about Apollos, yes, so he speaks about Apollos. of these things I have given a bigger chance, but I couldn't by speak, I couldn't by reason, I couldn't by explanation, I couldn't by explanation, I couldn't by explanation. Now he gives you the figure. And he says, when you see me take Isaac, I'm actually taking you. But you, you think I'm taking Christ. Look at this. Mm. So they take you because the wages of sin is death. They put you on the altar. While he's about to put it on you, the scriptures say that he that knew no sin became sin. And we've been dead and to sin. Might live and to righteousness. The all that a lamb comes takes the place of Isaac. In a figure, Isaac died. The man that leaves that altar is not the man which came to that altar. Why? Because the mind of the spirit killed him. You get me? That kind of anointing I'm a foot of that leaves that altar finds a well that is so dry. Philistines have dug it. It has no water. He says dig it. It must produce water. Because you're dealing with an anointing. And that is why it's so funny. When men fight men. Who came up the altars. If they've never been there. They can't understand. What God did in you. That is why Paul says. Recon yourselves. Don't count yourselves alive. Recon yourselves. That kind of man. Can only be destroyed. When you follow his order. 
some things have never been to the altar you were. They can't threaten you. Faith. Let me tell you something about that. Some of us, we went there. There is a place where we died. When Paul said, but you are not I, and the life that I love, I live by the faith, not the faith in, the faith of, not the faith of, not the faith of, not the faith of, took his apostle and he took him. It's not him anymore. So he can't find a way and believe God to get water. That is the man who has not been on that road. When he finds a well, he knows it must bring water. It's not a place of belief. It's a place of knowledge. That is why when the wife is barren, he realizes it's his responsibility. The Bible says, and Isaac entreated of but the Lord, pertaining his wife. That kind of man just doesn't marry. The angelics go ahead. And when they go ahead, they don't just go looking for the most beautiful thing. They look at instinct. That one who wakes up in the morning and she's not going to the world well to get a man that carries a certain instinct. Rebecca didn't go to look for a man. Rebecca, uh -huh. she went to fetch water. When she finds a man with camel, where Sango said that he set it. When put it there, set it. From that place of working, it was the anointing of Isaac. The one which laughs. While God is working, Hallelujah. She fetches water. Because that was the fleece. The servant of the man of faith. Had said. Because later. When the man of God. Wants to bless the wrong man. You need that kind of instinct. To cook the meat. The way the man wants him. <laughs> that kind of instinct <laughs> requires a certain understanding <laughs> of knowing he's blessing the wrong man. <laughs> and the only way he can shut them is by cooking the meat the way the wrong man can cook it. Dressing the man which doesn't work as one which works. Makes the man which doesn't work to smell like the man of the field. And the man which doesn't work is worried the father might know. And the instinct of the mother is ready to take the car because it's more expensive to bless the wrong man. It looks right to Isaac. But it is wrong to the way of the spirit. And hence the helper. So the place of Rebecca is as deep as the colonizer. And the call of Isaac is as deep as the obedience on Abraham. And the obedience on Abraham is as deep as the faith for God to provide the land. And the faith of God to provide the land is as deep as the man's worship. I didn't realize the whole course of events was changed because one man was That's why I got tired of certain songs. Because I realized that the distinctions 
of men which want to partake wine and bread without the mind to change the wine into blood and the bread into the body. This is the very reason why the veils have stayed in our worship. Yet the Bible says in Corinthians that the veil is there. So there are men right now who are trying to enter the Holy of Holies. They created an imaginary veil because the imaginary veil was the indifference of their flesh because the Christ I know the Bible says when he was raised the veil was torn into twain in other words there is no more veil but we are creating veil I don't know whether you understand what I'm trying to we are creating a certain order and a way of how things must appear for us to have the best worship yet God has supplied all things that pertain to life and God through knowledge, through that particular knowledge, he has distributed all things that pertain to life and has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly place and henceforth, we stand with the boldness before the mind of the heaven, that there is no fail. But men have put veils, and these veils are sometimes the wine and bread which can't be seen as the body and the blood. And when those men stand on poop, when those men stand wherever they are, they don't expose the true life of the spirit. They expose the flesh that needs to go further than the other. That is why in our pulpits we are having competition. That is why in our worship nights men want to sing better. That is why in our intercessions men want to shout louder. That is why in our preaching men want to preach the because those miracles exist with men who carry no veils in the place where men are preparing veils to us. And the place of feeling so important when you're behind the veil you create which veil was done away by Christ. That place that makes you think that's so more important than the past of Jesus. And that is why in our worship leaders today worship leaders dress differently from the people who are leading worship those are veils. Oh, 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 no, oh, come on, come on, somebody. Well, the place that takes us to the other place. The sensations of things oh, that come oh, 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 what matters is Christ. Christ. Thank God it was torn from head to toe. It was torn from the highest office it could ever be. To the Lord. He tells us simply come. Simply come. Simply come. Simply come. When we receive the life, he doesn't expect an ovation of calling men. And that is why I have a problem with men who think that leading men is taking men only to places you think you know. Yet sometimes the place of leading men is the depth of surrendering to who knows who. So. at the end of worship, we don't know where we all end. You might think I'm leading, but there's something deeper than my leading. You don't understand what I'm saying. You might think Rebecca needs a husband, but there's something deeper than getting married. It's instinct. It's instinct. It feels after a second kind. That is why they were all found working. 
Ruth is in the vineyard. Ruth, Rebecca is on the wall. Rebecca, hey, Rebecca, they are can't be found seated. And they are not in dispensed in dead works. No, they are aligned to instincts. They are the ultimate thing which ought to work in every child of God. To know what to do. Because the liberty of the spirit, I can assure you something. It's only when the spirit comes on you. He says, for when the spirit comes on you, you shall turn into another man. And you shall prophesy. Now listen to what's crazy. He says, and whatever occasion serves you, do. This is deeper than what God wants to do. God only leads us to places where He provides for us. But when He leads you beside still water, He won't limit how much you drink. That is why there is a difference. Some of you, when you went to that place, the veils determined how much you drank. I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. Some of you, when you went to that place, the veils that men took before you determined how much you drank. And that is why you got that spirit. But if you are drinking from a well, which is of Christ, he says you shall not suffocate. Do you know why men are thirsty? They didn't drink from the Christ. They drank from the veil. Men drew. And that is why every time we go in the presence of God, sometimes we don't maximize the depth. Sometimes we just go as men which are dry and thirsty. Not because we are thirsty, as them which have been fed and seeking for more. I'm not talking of the proverb 18 experience. Where is the Messiah amongst the correcting himself intermeddling in all kinds of people. No, I'm talking of a place where there is a desire of a man indifferent but tries to intermeddle with the wisdom he understands more. And that is why when he goes to the water he doesn't even know how much to drink. Because the veils that were laid before him sometimes defined cup, defined cups, defined everything, but he doesn't understand that when we receive the Christ, the place of our food is not only to go to those wells, but it's the place where we turn, and out of us gas, out of us gas, and that is why there are men who live all their lives trying to fill themselves of something that will never manifest while well, there are men which live in this life always manifesting for something that they got filled of he says for my palm is like a pen of a ready writer he says my heart is indicting good matter and he's speaking of the things that he has made touching that key Isaiah speaks of the Lord which has given him the tongue of the land know how to speak, how to worship, how to pray. It is deeper than the song I'm singing. It is how I must sing it. It is deeper than the preaching I'm preaching. It is how I must preach it. Because that's the difference between the gift and the meaning. So today we don't minister to men. We only go as far as our gifting. And that is why we can't delve in the love. Where these giftings end. You tell us where the prophecy it shall see. Where the deep worship it shall see. Where the depth of revelation it says it shall see. But when it gets to the love, he doesn't say it shall not see. He says it shall never fail. Meaning it can't fail to accomplish. It must in the thing which is sent out, the place where we go to the presence of God, without any veils of our flesh, any place to seek to please, the mind that wants men to call us to work, but the place that only lays us before God, to say whether they call me back, or they don't call me back, whether they like it, or they don't like it, there is a love in my spirit, way deeper, seeketh edification, than the knowledge that should 
And somebody can't understand me now. Because they're full of veils. And that is why the questions of those men sometimes serves the place where God moves and sometimes when he doesn't move and they think he didn't move because he wasn't in the mood to move forgetting that our God has promised to do us all the days of our forgetting that his mercy are new every morning forgetting that we get from glory to glory. If you demonstrated God last week, I want to promise you He wants to demonstrate to you. If you worship God last year, I want to submit to you He wants to worship through you deeper. If you saw Him last week, I want to tell you there is still more. Remove the veil. For as He is, so are we. And the Bible says, and when Christ, Bible Christo, which is our real life, appears, we shall appear with him. And that is why men don't understand that sometimes the true distinctions of Fanero, they're making invisible to become visible, sometimes requires the primary place of apocalypse, which is firstly removing off the veil. Because if the veil is not done away, we cannot manifest. And only in this dispensation have I seen men manifest the hidden things and when those things are manifested they come out visible and the veils on their face and only can those veils stay because you're dealing under a certain mind which is that there is that which increases it and there is that which feathers it away so when the bible says that in open face we now behold the lord it is because the glory on us is greater than the glory which is small and the reason why so is because he dealt out with the veil which reduced the glory and because the glory cannot diminish whole we speak with plainness of worship. We worship with plainness of worship. We praise with plainness of worship. Fully persuaded that he that began a good work in us shall see to a cold spirit of death. And he works in us both to will and to do according to his good place. The ultimate mind that every time me and the Lord say God must provide himself for us. It had to be. It had to be. And how can this lamb be revealed? And the life is not revealed. But so when he appears, when Christ, Christ, which is our real life, the Bible says, appears, we shall be like him. But you see, Abraham must understand that the place of the Christ appearing in first John is the place of the lamb coming out of the bush. I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say, sir. And he says, and now we shall be like him. We shall be like him. We shall be like him. But you see, when you're telling a man with a veil on their face, they don't understand that there's a place where the liberties of the spirit can only serve your occasion. Because the mind of God is too tugged to your spirit for you to intermeddle with the wisdom that destroys. Because he busts the desire. He created the form and let the substance. In the Christ Jesus, he says, 
Abraham. Your father Abraham. Rejoice. Yes, to see my baby. I always ask God. When was the rejoicing? He rejoiced. Yes, at the place when he worshipped with us. It's when he saw the lamb. Which the Lord shall provide. But if you go back to Genesis. You realize it's even more deeper. 22 where he was. He says. For God. Shall provide. Himself. A lamb. Let's go. He didn't say for God. Shall provide for himself. A lamb. <laughs> for God, he didn't say will provide for himself. A lamb. No, the Bible says for God to provide himself. A, a, a lamb. Lamb. In the literal understanding, he's gonna come in the form of a lamb. Behold the lamb of God. We stand at the way the in the of the world. And that's the thing that takes the ultimate sacrifice. sacrifice. For Isaac to leave that altar. Now, if Isaac should teach his boys to worship, he must apprehend that which Christ has apprehended him for Philippians 3 12. He says, not that I've attained, but I seek that I may not bring that which Christ apprehended him Why was I saved on that road? Yet the instruction was keeping him. And if I was saved on that road, when the Father spoke that God shall provide him for the land, what did he see when me and him stayed back to us while the servants moved beyond? They moved yonder. They moved yonder. They looked like they were yonder. They moved like they were ahead. But they really weren't. So then people set ahead to allow the real people to worship. But after that worship, the very understanding of those men will come and find the servants and still leave them there. Where are they? Are? Listen, we can by choice serve God. But we are not by nature servants. We are by nature sons. If out of friendship, he could say, Can I hide this from my servant? How about the son? With the son, he doesn't see. The Bible says, For all the Father has, he has given to the son. Whether things present or maybe to every war, whether Apollos, Apollos, whether Paul, Paul, whether the earth, or the or the world, or all things, things present, or maybe to every war, all things to come, or maybe to begin to all things, and, and, you and, are and, and you are Christ, and Christ is God. Christ when John saw it, he says, I am. Uh, we have an anointing. We have an anxious. We know all things. We are not of them which now go to know the mind of the spirit. We are of them now which go with the mind of the spirit. Our worship ought to be seen. Now I want to finish. When Christ dealt away with this veil, Christ he drew the distinction between men which want to create worship experience and men which are no more in worship. Sometimes even the mind that must give the experience is the very mind that separates us from the true life. Because God is not interested in our experience. He's interested in the place where we can't be. For we must decrease. And he must increase. I have seen days where men will worship and blind eyes are open. The dead are raised. People are coming out of their graves. Not because they are praying that it happens, but because they are too normal. Too normal. That they appeal so more in the other realm. I don't know whether you understand what I'm trying to say. Where they can't be anymore. 
a day has come a day has come where when the bible says that wisdom and understanding shall be the stability of your time you better know the god you worship he tells the Samaritan that though you regard the spiritual thing, yet you know not the God which you are. For we, the Jews, know the God which you are. I've seen places, and sometimes it scares me to say, but let me just say, I've seen places where men will get on pulpit and before life camera we disappear we shall hear their voices we shall hear them watching but we won't behold their form because if clouds could cover them which were under trials what do you think will cover men which are in the promise if fire moved by men in the night which were in the wilderness how much more men which are in the promised land and that is why when we get to the promised land honey and milk are trying with milk and honey and then the churning of milk which produces but from which the rock over the Bible says Bible pours out the oil a certain anointing of the depths of the world and when the Bible says when they sat at meat they broke bread but it could not have been meat it could not have been meat if the milk had not turned butter in, that's when I understood. Like the Acts book says, there was a time we saw the one we never felt after. And when we never felt after, the giftings excelled without the mind of the spirit of he which worked in us first to win and to do so in the book of Acts it speaks of a place where they will feel after him and find him he's speaking of a place where God ought to be found by men who feel after a seeking because it never speaks without a certain feeling and find they will trample on what's precious ask someone one day why is God revealing himself so crazy in our generation how can men be too excited about the vastnesses of revelation in their spirit without the appreciation of the feel after of why distributes sometimes they remind me of solomon he could easily put another god in the temple because of the many things david told him david never told him to love god he never told him to love god so he's building as one which is instructing by what the father has distributed that without the very spirit of what was on david there is no day david could have put another God in the temple that man loved he loved god and that is why sometimes when the precious things come Men ought to examine themselves whether they be in the faith. List the very things that come to them. 
might destroy too much not because in their own they are wrong but because if any man ought to strive the bible says that man ought to strive low there are laws of the spirit for every man which wants to go deep in God but if any man seeks to go so deep in God without the understanding of these laws that man might fall to the very low Peter says that they twist and wrestle with the scriptures like they do the rest of the scriptures for their own destruction. The anointing you carry upon your life can kill you if you don't carry the filler. Somebody get to your feet. I want to pray for someone. I feel the presence of God. I feel the presence of God. Oh, I see that he's around. It can't be forced. It can't be fake. We're beyond that. God is here. God is here. God is here. just raise your voice. You must say to voice video. And look unto God. God. Lately, when I know God, when I know God, when certain things have gotten tired, what we to be in I have seen God. I have seen God. I have seen God. I have seen God. But there's a certain thing that I'm hungering for what now. What you to change? I am The Lord showed me this. We're in such meetings. We will infuse knowledge to the lives of men. Not because we spoke many words. But because there is something in our form that carries the message of Christ in a figure. And it's imparted in the soul of a man. He says, I come to you that I might impart unto you spiritual that in the end you might be established. Every man has a place of glory. And every man in this life has a place of relationship. But when God, there are certain places in him, one way before Katunda, I've seen for a fact that change everywhere. You pray. They change everywhere. You believe. They change everywhere. You minister. They change everywhere. You understand. A man used to say, I see the Lord. But when he's singing now, he's seeing a God like the God who has to appear to him by the level he knows him. But there's a man who when he sings the very song, the way he sees God is different. How do you see God? When I say I see the Lord, how do you see God? How do you see God? Because there are certain if even the Gospels saw him different, Luke saw him as a son of God. John saw him as one which is from above. Mark saw him as an ox. Matthew saw him as a king. How do you see that God? I want to say that. I've seen the end of all perfection. That man saw everything perfect that could ever exist in God. Yet he was not a new creation. 
But now with open face. That means that there are men which beheld him with closed face. Because the brightness of that glory can pass through any veil. And define a certain God. Who they see only through a veil. And suspect there is a light. Now the Bible says with open face. With open face. We are now beholding as in a glass as in a mirror the glory of the Lord that means when we put that word before us and we behold like in a mirror what we see in that mirror is us faith but actually, it is the glory of God. We are now the glory of God. And the Bible says that now we are metamorphosed. We are changed into the same image from doxa to doxa from all that God is and all that God has to all that God is and all that God has even as by the Spirit of God how do you see certain men are going to look in a few hours in a few days in a few months in a few years in a few weeks I've seen a day where God won't strive with man. Where flesh must give it. To me. I saw days where men are going to walk on the street. And people are going to say that is Jesus. That is not a normal man. That is Jesus. They are translated to the full glory. The very measure and the state of our life. When those men stand to worship. God. and the Christ the Christo. they will worship the Christ but the Christ the Christ with the knowledge no that the greatest love that he has poured to them no is to manifest them no to manifest them no as he is no the days of men have come to an end no the days of men of God have come to an end. The days are coming. When men won't define you as men. I promise you. And yes, you'll be humble. Under the mighty hand of God. Somebody raise your voice. I see men of God. Men of I see the Lord So for the people of the I see the Now listen to me. I heard him. I've heard him. He says, You to me. I can be away with your dream. I'm going to deal with you. Somebody just yield your ghost. Yield your spirit. Why you more you go? The Bible says Jesus gave up the ghost. And the heavens open. Somebody yield your spirit. Why you more you go? 
unto God. Something is about to happen. God deal with somebody. If somebody on this ground, they are tired. They're just tired. They're just tired. They went to God. He just wants you. He just wants you. And you're feeling them now. And you're bending them now. And you're breaking them now. And you're dealing with them now. God, we're hungry. To see you, God. We want to see you, God. We want to see you, God. We're tired of playing church. We're tired of veil. We're tired of religion. We're tired of too much talk. We're tired of a mere theology without a life. We want a theology with a life. We want a theology with understanding. We want a worship with substance. Sometimes all you need is God. All you need is His presence. All you need is His anointing. Hey, in the name of Jesus. Sometimes all you need is His presence. All you need is his anointing. I've seen the blind see. I've seen the deaf And then the Lord told me there is more. There is more. What are you doing?
I want you to raise your hand right now. I see a glory that is about to fall. Many in worship. I see a glory that is about to fall. Worship like never before. Many people will worship, but when you do, I see a distinction of glory. Holy Spirit, separate your people. 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 Separate your people, you will have to 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 separate your people, you will have to
He says as you worship him. 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 He says as you worship as you've been having too much operation in your body on what you feel must be coming out you've carried a frustration for so long frustration of why it's not coming out but tonight by the spirit of God something is getting back Holy Ghost You. You've been hit for so long. 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 You've been hit for so You've been so hidden for so long. The Bible says nothing here will not be uncovered. For no man lights a candle and puts it under a bush. You had to shine. You had to raise. You had to increase. You had to 
Why are you not know where you're getting out? You had to change the Why you not choose the world? Why you not change the world? Why you not choose the Something about why you went to Kuliko. Bigger than you. Yeah, to consume more than any. Hara Pakatalaka. Sharaba, help her. Help Muyambe, Muyambe. Somebody help her. Muyambe, will you? Yala, la, 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 baka. Lele, li, la, la, ba. God is here. Katon, daddy, one. Oh, 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 oh. God is here. Cut on that one. I see God anoint someone that never cut on that come up the corner to me. Everything there. Pull it to full. Like a leg on your hand. Go to that chemical. We'll have light. Sit the full of them. I hear Alice. Put it in your body. Put it in your body. I hear Lucuta. Put it in your Lucuta. I hear Anita. Put it in Anita. I hear a Mariam. Put it up, Mariam. And your second name also begins with an M. God surprised that woman. God surprised that man. God surprised that man. Oh, my God. 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 If you have any sickness when you touch where it is, I feel an anointing that can get anything out of your body. Oh, 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 was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowship at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at live Street.com slash Venero. Venero, make nonsense.